In this last demonstration, we consider a three-story building where we represent the horizontal displacement of each floor by x1, x2, or x3, moving from the ground upwards. When we model this as a 6 by 6 first order linear system, we end up with six eigenvalues and six eigenvectors. In particular, we end up with three complex conjugate pairs, which are all purely imaginary. There's no friction in our initial model, so what we get are solutions based on these pure imaginary values for the eigenvalues that are going to be pure oscillations. What's more interesting is how these associate with behaviors of the tower structure itself. Specifically, we'll see three different frequencies because we know by now that these values in the eigenvalues represent frequencies in our solutions. And these values in the eigenvectors are going to help us understand what kind of behavior is going to happen at that frequency. Specifically, if we look at this slow frequency, which is the lowest value of all three, it has a positive one for the x1 position, 1.8, and then 2.2 for the other two positions. What that'll look like, we expect, is that when we stimulate this building or we shake it with a frequency of oscillation at 0.45 rads per second, the first floor will move a little bit and then back. The second floor will move in the same direction more and then back. And the third floor will move even further in that direction and then back. There is a typo here. There should be a minus. We'll get to that later. Let's see the simulation in action. Here we have our building in full color splendor. And we also have the resulting motion of the various floors. Notice that we start here with a frequency of 4.5 radians per second and that does not align with any of the eigenvalues that we found earlier. And so what happens if we try to animate that is we're pushing on this building and it's hard for it to respond. It's less obvious than in a spring system, but the beams are trying to oscillate at certain frequencies, the ones elicited here or indicated here, but they're not anywhere near the frequency we're pushing at, so there's no buildup of energy. There's no constructive uh, interference between where we're pushing and the natural oscillations of the system. However, if we go to 0.45 as a frequency, so we're going to push much more slowly on this, but at a carefully crafted rate, notice what we get here. We get resonance. And notice that we see all these values get into sync with one another. It's a bit bumpy at the beginning, but over time, we see that t times cos or t times sine shape of the function. And when we animate that, you can see it takes a couple of cycles to get everything together. But you can imagine if you push gradually and just wait for the whole structure to come back and then push again to the other direction, you'll get this positive feedback, this positive constructive energy that leads to, well, building collapse in this case. But we see the relationship between the mathematics of the external force and these otherwise mysterious eigenvalues in the system. Let's take a look at the other two frequencies, and in particular their eigenvectors, and see what they could tell us. Let's look next at the 1.24, and notice again, position, velocity, position, velocity. Here are three positions. So here we expect somehow the first and second floors to move in the same direction with the first floor moving more, and then the third floor moving in an opposite direction. Let's see how that plays out. We'll choose that frequency, and notice we still see that pattern of resonance, the T sine Ts, but especially down here you can see the two lines are in the same direction, these two green or blue and red lines, and the yellow line is in the opposite direction. How does that get played out in an animation? Here we go. We can see the first two floors are moving in the same direction, but the second floor isn't moving as much, and the third floor is always in the opposite direction from the other two. And again, you can imagine the structure moving in this way. What we're doing with this external force is eliciting that because it's a natural way for the, sy the system, the structure to move. And when we encourage it with the appropriate frequency from outside, it will quite happily respond. Last but not least, we'll look at the most active uh, high frequency mode. And this one has opposite signs every time. So it's negative, positive, negative. And I think this is the most interesting one to watch. Let's take a look. 
I call this the dancing building. <laughs> Both, all three floors oscillate in opposite directions from their neighbors, and so we get this quite intricate balance between the various beams and their natural oscillations. We see the, again, resonance T sine T, T cos T behavior in the graph itself, but it's a very interesting display when you look at how this structure would move under these conditions. So hopefully that gives you a better sense of why we're so interested in the eigenvalues, mainly because we can trigger various modes by forcing this structure with a mode or with a frequency that matches one of those modes, and also the interpretation of what would the oscillation in that mode look like? Can we predict that in advance? Absolutely, the information in the eigenvectors can help us determine or help us predict what those modes will look like before we actually use that external force, even in a simulation, let alone a real structure. It's a very, very powerful tool.